This is our liquid level sensor for this YCIV. So this is what killed this compressor initially. If you're not familiar with it, essentially it's got a little sensing rod in there and the factory obviously does not want you playing with this. And it's just registering the level of it. I think it's using some kind of uh, electronic sensing and able to register the resistance. I'm honestly, I'm not even sure. What makes this thing tick other than it reads refrigerant level and the other one was bad and broke and I'm going to be putting the good one in. That's, that's, I, I can tell you that with confidence. It's just a hole up top here. Now something I do want to point out is a conversation that came up on site. You don't want to use Teflon on a system like this, especially with 134, but with any refrigerant in general. One of the issues that Teflon has is it is reactive to the refrigerant. And because of that reaction, it does end up actually deteriorating and eating away at that Teflon to the point of it will just completely disintegrate and start to form a leak that was perfectly sealed. It'll do it over a matter of, of several months. I know this because I've made these mistakes and I learned the hard way not to do that. So learn from my life lesson to you. Don't, don't, don't use Teflon on refrigerant. Uh, I think they make some actual uh, refrigerant safe sealants out there. My personal choice is Nylog or just across the board. Uh, another option on the table, while it is not my personal choice or, or preference, would be uh, Loctite 515 if you needed an alternative option or if you just didn't trust Nylog then the common industry standard is 515. Anytime you're working on an EEV make sure you fully backseat that valve so that it doesn't mess up. Now we're going to change these out because whenever we were doing the troubleshooting I heard some strange noises and, and typically these ought to be very smooth and silent in operation. When they're not very smooth it can be evidence that the gears or the, sh the threading in there could be having a problem which is going to throw it out of calibration calibration as it's operating so as a means of precaution we're going to go ahead and change this out now my one issue i have is we ordered this and it's been several months and they still haven't even told us when it's going to ship yet so the circuit beside the one we're changing which is currently down and that compressor has been sent off for a warranty investigation that warranty circuit has brand new valves that we got put in when we put the compressor in which ran for just a matter of days so i'm actually robbed one of those new valves out of there put it in the circuit we're about to get turned on and then the valve we've ordered We'll wait for that to come in because we're, we're going to be waiting several months for that warranty compressor to process anyway. This little rubber ring here down is what extends out and seats inside of the housing to stop the refrigerant flow. going to interrupt this broadcast to listen to me talk for a minute. Uh, so far, we've made pretty good progress on this, as you've seen as we go. Got the compressor changed out, got the liquid level sensor changed, swapped out the EEV on the feed valve. Uh, the drain valve is working fine, not worried about it. Uh, we're at the final stage of pressure testing at the moment. So we're going to get that set up. We're going to run that overnight and see how it looks in the morning when we get here. So far, we're looking at about 155 on the high side and the low side was maintaining about 125. If we come in in the morning, everything looks good, then we will be ready to start vacuum. Uh, then we're gonna get the Navic system up here. Before we can do the actual startup on the compressor though, we're gonna have to get the wiring taken care of. You know, if, if you've been following any shorts, you can see this part, but I'll show you now. One of the things about it, when we were troubleshooting this compressor, I didn't have a reason at the time to open the pecker head and actually look at this wiring. I kind of wish I had at this point, but oh well, hindsight. This was definitely contributing to our current issues. And for those in the back snickering, yes, the, these are referred to as an actual pecker head. It's not referring to male genitalia. It is just what we call it. I couldn't tell you where that term comes from to even begin with, but that's what it's called, so that's what we call it, and that's what I'm going to call it, and everybody just gets a snicker about it, because, well, it's, I guess it's funny, whatever. One of the things we did to have a better pressure test overnight, we didn't pull a vacuum, so instead of pulling a vacuum, we actually purged the system of nitro first, so we ran it through the discharge, let it bleed out the suction for a little bit. That helped get some of the atmosphere evacuated from the system, 
So then we had a more pure nitrogen because right now we're having like an 80 degree afternoons and 60 something degree mornings. What that'll do is when you come into the next morning, you may see your pressure drop, you know, who knows, 5, 10, 15 PSI. And honestly, that could just strictly be from the atmosphere that was blended in with the nitrogen affected your temperature. I'm sorry, the atmosphere that was blended in with the nitrogen affected your pressure and created a, a false drop in pressure that was, that was not actually because of a leak. I remember when I first saw that for the first time, I was working on a little split system for a little, uh, it's like a little gift shop type thing. And I did an overnight pressure test, went in the next morning and I was freaking out because I thought I had a leak. I'd lost like 10 PSI overnight or five PSI. And then I, I finally, after I spent hours looking for it, couldn't find it, called, a, called another guy and asked his input. And that was his first question. Well, did you pull a vacuum before you did your pressure test? Well, no. Like, well, that's your problem. You, you left too much atmosphere in it, and you just it got cold overnight, so you didn't have a you didn't have a leak. I was like, oh, well, that would have saved me a couple hours. Either way, we're not going to do that here. We landed at 155 on the oil. Discharge 157, suction is 125, and they're not really moving. Really makes me question if that suction transducer has a problem, because ultimately they all should stay this, be the same. We could throw a gauge on it, but we're not gonna worry about it right now. This is good, we're gonna stop touching it, everything's sealed up. Gonna be going down today. Have to do overnight, that's the main question. So we drop down to 140, 137. Now I'll be, I'll be honest, that kinda makes me Want to hesitate a little bit, especially because you know we did do the purge before we charged it with nitrogen. That dropped more than I honestly expected it to. So we're, we're looking at basically about 15 psi a drop. Now normally this that's that's the more extreme addition of what can happen. Uh, you know some nights or some situations it might be only five or 10 psi. This one's 15. Uh, I do feel confident we've got the system sealed. I just I don't know. It, it was more than I expected. Makes me hesitate slightly. At the same time, I do feel confident in the work that we did. It didn't drop more than that. When we charged everything yesterday, I think we were pushing 90 degrees-ish or just below it. And we got down into the 60s overnight. The sun hadn't got on the equipment yet. Now, one thing I have noticed is as I've been here, the temperature has been slowly rising and we have slightly gone up, you know, a couple of PSI since I got here which gives me a little more confidence that it's, a, it's more of a temperature thing than an actual pressure loss. We're really gonna find out on the vacuum. That I've not been paid by Navic in any way. No currency has exchanged whatsoever. They have sent me this equipment to test and put new content on, and that is the only agreement that I have on the table. All of this throughout this entire process is my own personal thoughts and opinions. I just want to make that clear before we even get started in this. Time for the moment of truth. She's set up, she's ready. Now, if you haven't started to freak out yet, I am setting up with just 1 3 8 hose off of 1 3 8 connection. This is way underkill for this pump, but the way York did this is my only other 3 8 port is way down there. I only have one quarter inch port here, and then I have my discharge port way up there. Now, I could put my vacuum gauge up there, but if you notice that the port is facing down, and that's an automatic ask for oil in your micron gauge, which is really bad. I've lost way too many gauges to lose another one. I wanted to test out Navix micron gauge I sent over to see how I like it and how it compares to my yellow jacket that I've been using. That being said, that really leaves me just this one option. Now, historically, set up like this with a Tez 8 and using the Megaflow setup, I can achieve below 500 microns in about four hours with a setup like this with a Tez 8. We're gonna see how it goes today. It's either gonna whoop its butt or they're gonna come out pretty comparable. This is not a perfect test and ultimately I'm not trying to create a perfect test because when we do vacuums on a day to day, they're not perfect world vacuums. What I'm trying to do is recreate what would be as much of a normal scenario. If I had my Tez 8 up here, this is exactly how it would hook up. 
and this is how I would use this pump. As a means of keeping the test honest, I want to see, you know, what it can do. In about a month, I'll be doing a video on a centrifugal, and I'll actually get to set this thing up more as to what it's fully capable of doing. And that's really what this machine is actually designed for. It wasn't, it had less of the air cold situation I'm in right now in mind and more of that centrifugal. But this is going to be a really good test for me regardless because honestly, if it can really compete with the Tez 8, I really like the setup of this machine and the True Blue rig, and I just I like a lot of what I what I have here. Either way, we're gonna see how it goes. Something else I also liked is it is exactly two quarts. Right now, I'm using Navix oil they sent over the NPO 68. So we're gonna do that on this one. I did check the manual; it doesn't specify anything about a specific oil. So we got two quarts here on the next vacuum, which is gonna be a separate video on the other side. We're gonna try out just the new. Calgon vacuum pump oil and see how it compares. Now it says an ISO 46. So I'm curious, this one's a 68, that one's a 46. Being the fact this one's a heavier oil, uh, I'm curious as to how it's gonna affect the operation of it. It does say NP68 on the side of the pump. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask Navic before we do this test and see like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking to compare this. This is the pump oil we can buy every day on the shelf. How bad is it really if I try to use this, which would be a more everyday application? Or am I really limited to just the MP68? Granted, most of you that are looking at using this pump on a day-to-day -day and making the investment on a system like this, you're probably willing to spend more to use all the exact correct stuff. But I really want to see how this measures up on a day-to-day -day heavy commercial application side because I feel like this is what these are really built for is industrial heavy commercial. And this is what every day looks like. We don't have exactly everything we need to perfect specification every time. So what does this pump do when everything's not perfect? I got some feedback from y'all saying that these have really bad exhaust issues where they just dumps a ton of vapor. So I'm curious to see what's about to happen. I feel like I was a little anticlimactic. It's not loud at all though. There's moving some CFM, I tell you that. Joker is pushing. Okay. Well now all we can do is just wait. 30 minute check-in, 1110. We're down to 33 uh, 3300 microns. I want to say it's doing pretty good. Oil level staying pretty consistent. We are getting some heat on the oil, but it's not super hot. I know that's an issue a lot of pumps have, is that oil in it will get super hot, and the hotter it gets, the less it works. So right now it is right at three o'clock, so we're roughly somewhere between four and five hours into the vacuum. Now, this is by far not a perfect test, and honestly, I'm not even sure that I would genuinely uh, feel comfortable comparing this to a normal situation and be a fair comparison against the Appian Tez 8 because this, this system set open for uh, several weeks honestly we had some nitrogen kind of on it but it just we had to do the compressor change and there was just a lot of scheduling issues blah 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 regardless the point is there was a lot of opportunity for things to settle in the system uh, and I believe that we may be partially fighting that uh, the other thing I'm doing right now is I'm trying to verify am I going to see an actual leak condition through my microns or am I just looking at moisture. By the way the system has responded this entire time, I really believe we're dealing with just a moisture issue in this system. Uh, and watching my micron gauges at right now, they're, they're very slowly incrementally cre creeping up which just makes me go back into a moisture thing. I don't think we pulled too fast, honestly. I know that was a big concern for quite a few guys given the, how big this system is. I think the fact that I was only able to hook up one hose was only gonna allow me to pull so many CFM regardless. So I don't think I had the ability to over pull it and create a sublimation or, or flash freeze uh, because of that. Now, if I had both hoses, you know, fine. There's a lot of debate y'all can have on your own outside of that. Regardless, uh, I, I'm, I am comfortable saying if I had an actual leak that I was trying to deal with or anything of that nature, I'd be seeing that right now. 
Uh, I, when I shut everything down, I was at 1150. I'm basically not even, I've not even rose 100 microns. And I've been off for probably five, five, ten minutes now, which a leak or something of that nature would have definitely shown. This is classic uh, moisture symptoms. So, But my oil has done really well throughout this pull down. It definitely gets hot. I mean, heck, they even they got a temperature sticker. They expect it to get hot, which, I mean, it was going to get hot regardless. But it has done a fairly decent job regulating temperature, which a lot of pumps don't, and that's part of their downfall. So uh, good on Navic for that so far. Genuinely, I've been really happy with it. Uh, but my four hour window that I was hopeful for, I just wanted to see what it would do and give it its best shot. But I don't think it's this pump's fault that we didn't achieve that. I think it has more to do with uh, just the overall conditions surrounding the job. And the other circuit we have to do is gonna be kind of the same deal. It goes back to what I was talking to Navic about. You know, I'm not trying to set up or create, and this, these aren't gonna be perfect world environments. You know, I really want to see how this system functions in a real day-to-day, -day, you know, in your hands kind of situation. That's definitely what we got here. I have really liked the little Navic uh, Micron gauge so far. It's very stable. It gives a real good detailed reading. Uh, it's probably time I replace my Yellow Jacket sensor. Uh, this has been my favorite Micron gauge for years. I really like this Micron gauge, but uh, it's it's been very erratic this entire vacuum, which sometimes it can act that way. I get some weird stuff with it every once in a while. Today's definitely been one of those days. At this stage, we're at the end of the day, we're gonna do an overnight vacuum. Some general thoughts, honestly, so far, I have been very happy with the pump. I don't have anything to really be concerned about. Honestly, the only legit complaint I would have or feedback is just the size of the listen we're talking about a massive industrial pump it's going to be big it's going to be heavy so that's ridiculous for me to even bring up the fact that it's big and heavy because what do you expect uh, that being said though if you're going to look at a system like this that cart that it's attached to it doesn't come with that or at least this particular one doesn't I think the 16 version does come with the pump but the 30 and the 24 don't it's going to be imperative that you have that pump or that the little cart for it to roll around on uh, and just for picking it up and the ease of use it's going to be way too difficult not having the cart to mount it to so you definitely need to look at investing in that and up to this point i've not changed the oil and i don't plan to i haven't seen a need to it stayed fairly clean through the sight glass in the front uh, but it has started to get a slightly darker tint. I just don't feel a justification for changing the oil at this point other than, you know, paranoia, which um, I'd rather see how this thing does with bad oil regardless. Even if that oil does trash out, you know, let's just, it's still working, it's still pulling, let it do its job. But we are well on our way. It is the next day. Vacuum did wonderful overnight. Now, I didn't get here until after lunch. I had some stuff that came up for this morning. But we pulled down to 350 and we set on vacuum for three hours and we rose only a few hundred microns as nothing. I ain't worried about that at all. I will say I'm actually quite impressed with the Navic uh, micron gauge here, the NMV1. Uh, I need to change the sensor on this yellow jacket. It, it, it has been sporadic this entire time. and. I guess uh, it's just it's just time. I got to do that every so often on this thing. And this pump did phenomenal. Ran overnight, no issues. Oil looks good. Everything looks good. Pulled down wonderfully. Really exciting. Now we're getting ready to start the charge. We're checking the weight scales on the tanks now. So once we have this and we get our total weights, we'll know how much we have. And uh, let's see, the 304 pounds, basically 305. And then we got this one, and the tar on these, hell, I forget. Where's it at? 79.6. All right, so basically take 80 pounds off of 305, and so we're right there at weight. I mean, that's right, so that's a full tank. Full tank. And then we'll need that tank and just a little bit more out of that one, so we'll get that scale weight. And then we get to pull out the four-cylinder Navic recovery, and we're gonna use that for charging. See how fast that goes. 
that I can definitely use as a comparator. So for sure we got I think 230, 35 pounds in these circuits. We ought to have no problems getting all that charge in there within an hour to hour and 15 minutes flat once we get everything set up. Especially using the big 200 tanks because normally I, I, I like to use the 100s because they're easier to move around and handle and you gotta swap between tanks so you get a couple of minutes of downtime between that. So being the fact we're using these we gotta get an even faster time. Reading through the manuals and looking at the documentation it doesn't specifically state that you can do a straight liquid like you can on the G5 twin so we're gonna find out because I'm gonna put it to the test. I really want to see just how well that thing can pump and can it compete. Here, I tell you what, put the straight end on that one. On this put side, the, put this one up there. A little bit of a shutter.
absolute beast. Yeah, really quiet. That was you, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. This thing did 225 pounds and pulled the tank down into a decent vacuum in 40, 45 minutes. My normal setup like this using my G5 twin, I would have pulled the tank down to, you know, close to zero. And I would have expected to do that right at an hour to an hour and 10 minutes. Not take it as far as pull it down into an actual vacuum. Normally I don't take the time for that. But when this thing just completely whooped up on him, I decided, well, let's just see how far it could go. We've got a centrifugal coming up that we're gonna be doing some major repairs on in the month of November. So we'll be doing the repairs in November. The video will probably come out, you know, maybe early December. We'll see, we'll see what that looks like. But the point is, we normally hire out our recovery because they have larger machines and it's just more convenient that way. But this time, we're gonna do this in-house because this pump is so ridiculously fast that, you know, we're, we're I think we could probably move a thousand pounds of 134 out of a YK in a day, which is gonna compete with what our vendors can do because they're normally able to move about a thousand pounds in eight hours and they've got little uh, custom built Copeland compressors that they're using for their recoveries. That's really saying something. So we're gonna do a push-pull recovery with that system. On the next chiller, I'm gonna do a push-pull charge and we'll compare the results and see where that goes. But the vacuum is a far less than perfect test and it's not a real comparator. So overall though, that pump did absolutely phenomenal and at bare minimum, directly competes with this application. And given what I've seen out of this stuff so far, I genuinely think that once we compare it on a machine that it's more tailored to, like a centrifugal, I expect that we're really gonna start to see how that pump is able to shine compared to the competition. So we've got the electrical tied back in so far. We've pulled it through and we re-ran it. Now Jeff over here had a pretty stinking good idea, one we didn't do before was actually just completely remove the conduit out of the chiller, redo everything, and then slide the conduit back in. That's a lot easier than trying to do it the other way. It is time for the moment of truth. We're ready to turn on our new compressor. Everything's set up, everything's wired in. We've been powered up overnight. We were able to get the load up over lunch. And then right now it is right after lunch on the final day. What better be? So, system one, we just got to off. To on and enable, and it's bringing it on. Now, things we still need to worry about is we still have to let it run for a minute. We need to see where our oil level lands. We need to just all the normal checks. We did pump some oil into the compressor to make sure that it had oil. Interesting turn of events, our fuses are blown for the condenser fans and we're not passing any power to them. Because of those fan fuses blown, that compressor is going to be able to run super hot and it's just going to keep going and, and honestly we ran it for, for several minutes before we, we realized that those fans weren't staging up. We need to verify which fuses are still good. Uh, we can rob fuses from circuit 2 if we need to to fix it and then uh, we're also going to get up here and verify if we have any blown uh, or if we have any shorted to ground condenser fans which are the white plugs there uh, the red plugs are your uh, circuit 2 and the blue or purple depending on which color you prefer is circuit 3 so we found the blown fuses they're, they're right there you see them those, those three they were they were blown that's that's what we're going with they were they were blown you, you can see how blown they were they they blew out of there they're so freaking blown because somebody no, never mind. Just like that, we're golden. She's running great. Levels look good. Valves look good. Very happy with the vacuum and recovery. 